Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we are tackling a few slightly more advanced watercolour techniques as we tackle the beautiful spring flower, the Iris reticulata. I think I said that right. So grab your paints and let's get started. Okay, let's draw an Iris. Um, this was actually uh, suggested to me by one of my Patreons who had some lovely flowers growing in her garden she sent me a few photos so I thought right why not all we need is a stem in pencil so we can say goodbye to that and we are going to start off with the flowers at the top now this flower painting is probably a little bit more advanced than anything we've done so before only so much in that it's got a few sort of stages to it um, I'm just mixing up some cobalt blue deep and some alizarin, alizarin, alizarin crimson. Sorry, I knew that I'm getting a few um, different suggestions of how to pronounce it. Um, and I sound awkward saying every single one, so I hope that made you chuckle rather than made you want to throw your computer across the room. Um, so we've got a lovely sort of indigo kind of colour. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by painting the first sort of trumpet petal. Now an iris has, as far as I understand it, three sort of lower um, lower hanging trumpeted petals, uh, like this one I'm going to paint now, and then three petals that sort of stand up a bit higher. So I'm going to paint a sort of curling curve here, really nice and dilute just to start off with because we're going to be adding layers and then I'm going to do another sort of bunny ear on that trumpet and then I'm going to paint this curling petal that is unfurling from this trumpet and it's very dilute at this point quite wet if you feel like you've got too much water on your page you can always just remove a little by doing that with a wet brush just sort of drawing up a little bit of the colour. Now what I am going to do just for this initial stage is I'm going to drop in just a little bit of extra cobalt blue just in the tip there and then I'm going to move on to my next petal. So they're a rather funny shape aren't they? Uh, this one I, we're going to be seeing from the front so it's all going to anchor from there so imagine that the trumpet comes up and then we're seeing that open petal shape from the front so I'm doing two sort of C curves that, and sort of just getting into a little bit of a tip at the bottom. Clean my brush off because it has a much paler centre and then I'm going to draw in that colour and making a sort of slightly uneven wobbly heart shape. I'm pretty pleased with that. And then these two bunny ears from the front. So you can sort of see what I was getting at when I was painting that one from the side. And this was before, I'm going to drop in a bit of that extra blue. Now this one had just the right amount of water and the blend's going really nice and smoothly. You can see from this one it's just travelling a little bit further in a slightly uneven manner and that just shows there was a little bit extra water in there but I'm not upset about that at all because we're soon going to be adding a few nice sort of extra lines of detail that sort of look a little bit like that. So I just had a really happy, happy accident there. Okay, let's paint the third trumpet. So this one's gonna come out this way, just hidden in behind this main one here. So my mind, it's almost like I have x-ray vision. I'm going to imagine the trumpet coming up and then just unfurling just here. And two little 
bunny ears. Very nice. And a little bit of blue in the tip. And because it's wet enough, it's traveling along. It doesn't need me to do too much to sort of coax it along. Now, whilst that is drying, I am going to just focus my attention um, just to this little join here where the petals have anchored all together because it's also the place where the petals just in behind these three are also anchored. So these three petals are much more vertical and they're just simply sort of slim petals like that. Just done by squishing down the belly of the brush and then getting the fine tip. So I'm gonna come in with one here as well. And this time I'm going to be careful Sometimes we do a nice translucent overlap, but this time I'm keen to try and just keep them separate. And the beauty is because although we're working in very dilute colours, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're using tons of water. So these petals in the front have actually dried, which is brilliant. And let's just drop in. See, it's so brilliantly dried so quickly that I've run out of time to get the blue in but I don't mind because again some of those little lines and stripes are going to be rather useful okay so I'm really pleased with the basis of our flower there let's look a bit further down and get a stem in there so we're gonna get sap green woken up in the palette and also a bit of green gold. This seems to be, ooh, there's a bit of orange in there. Um, this seems to be my go-to stem mix because sap green just feels a little bit, a little bit much a lot of the time and green gold on its own isn't quite right. But the two together, well, that's the joy of watercolor, isn't it? Now I'm just gonna get a very dilute bit of green and I'm doing this again in my size four brush. Just gonna kiss the edge of that purpley colour and I'm going to sort of draw it down to here and then the stem of the iris sort of goes thinner and then broadens out again. Now with my size 2 brush now I'm going to get the pure sap green involved and I want there to be a bit of a dark blend going on here so I'm quite enjoying just popping in a few sort of rather concentrated strokes there. Clean off the brush and then just help it down to that junction there. And then let's get a bit of slightly more concentrated purple. Oh, look at that. Lovely. And now, ooh, just dabbing in a little bit because so often with flowers, you get a lot of the dye from the petals running down the stem. And that is very much the case with the iris. Um, now, you can see we've used a slightly more purpley mix for that. And that's because we're going to now be adding in some details with that slightly more purpley color in mind. But first, we've got a little bit of yellow to put in. So that's dried nicely now. So with a bit of cadmium yellow, that's quite dilute, I'm doing a singular stroke down the middle of those three opened out iris petals. And I'm leaving them, I'm just leaving them to it. And then I'm going to start looking at uh, my, my petals. So with the trumpet, essentially what happens is this top bunny ear sort of is the, well, you'll see what I mean. It sort of comes down over the petal that fans out to the bottom. So what I've just done here is I've started to use this purple color to create a more defined shape. But then what I can do is I can use the wetness 
to create a, a really crisp line on one side and a blended line on the other. And this will help me with my shaping of this petal here as well. It's just fanning out and sort of flopping out there. So I'm going to be combining this new purple colour with more of the cobalt blue. You do get irises in a range uh, of, of the blue and purple tones, so you can absolutely sort of play around with the shape. So again, I'm just using a very small brush to just create almost like a, a new side, a new sort of curl or fold to these petals. But we're still keeping it fairly simple. Okay, so for here, for this one, I'm going to just do a little bit of an edged shape there. Drop in a little bit of blue. Um, this is very much the personification, or oh, personification when it's a flower? I'm not sure if that's the right word, but um, this sums up the phrase new botanical painting for me, which is the name of my book, which is all sorts of flower and foliage painting projects. I am by no means a botanical artist. They are incredibly talented and, and patient people spending months, maybe even longer, on a single painting. The detail is incredible and the reason um, for that is because the original botanical paintings were botanical studies and they were for the purpose of science and record. They needed to be super, super accurate. Whereas for me, what I call new botanical painting is when I'm very focused on making sure my piece is as close as possible to its reference, the subject matter, but I am never going to be spending that much time on one flower, ultimately because my role began as a watercolour artist as a wedding stationer, so I had to paint to a deadline each time. So there was no time for me to be spending all that, those months on one painting. So new botanical painting was born, where we use wet techniques of watercolour and layering them up to start to create rather crisp paintings um, and so it's all about really using the watercolour to our advantage and creating stuff that looks rather impressive I, I think. Um, so yeah and uh, it's wonderful the, the book is something I'm very very proud of and um, if you're interested in learning this style of painting that's loose to a point but then actually we we go a bit further we add layers we add details and we really make the flowers crisp up and and recognizable we make them recognizable as opposed to just purely sort of whimsical then you can get yourself a copy by looking in the episode notes below and I'm very excited to say it comes in a number of different languages and we also have an American version as well with Americanized spellings so there's plenty of choice for you okay we're getting there aren't we we're getting there so we've now got a range of petals that have had their first layer of sort of extra colour which has just given them an extra dimension. You can see now that that looks like a sort of folded over petal that's come down and the, the trumpeting petal has come out from it so that's fantastic. The, um, the stem has blended down really nicely so this is all going well. Now I'm going to just get a little bit more blue into that purple mix and now we're going to look at the details on the petals themselves. So I'm gonna start on this side and using my small brush again. And iris petals, when you look closely, have got a series of sort of ridges, lines that 
creep up towards that yellow center. So I'm starting from the edge. I'm using a fairly dilute version of this color because I don't want it to be too strong. Um, but you can see what's happening is we've got a faint sense of these sort of paler dashes, which is the layer underneath. And then we're going to do the same with the sort of bunny ear petals. So we're essentially in, creating almost like a, a, an in-between layer, aren't we? We've had our really thin layer of colour and we've put in a crisp, heavier layer to get the sense of those folds in the petals. And now we're going for more detail. And what I'm going to do with the central one here, so I'm just going to add a little bit of darker blend to that last one because we can sort of see the mouth of the tunnel it's come out of really. We could do that there as well. And on the central one here, these lines are all about reflecting that curl, that curve that's coming out from the petal. Now even these lines are a little bit too defined for my liking. So whilst it's just wet around the edge, I'm just going to take advantage of that and pop in a little bit of extra darkness at the edge. a clean larger brush to just go over it and smooth it a little bit just to soften those lines but we do want them there and then just get in a little bit more of that bold color because we have wetted the petal which will allow that bolder colour to blend in a little bit more seamlessly. So you can see what I mean by the fact that we've given ourselves a slightly bigger challenge this time because there are plenty of layers and stages to these petals but you can see instantly that that is really starting to come together when it was looking like that. So we'll do one more of these. Okay, so out comes the petal from there. So Well, now you might hear my dog barking in the background. It's quite a territorial chap. We normally manage to keep him, keep him quiet whilst we're painting with plenty of cuddles and, and biscuits and throwing the ball downstairs, but sometimes he likes to tell the delivery man who's boss. We have a, a brown, a chocolate brown rescue labradoodle called Crumble and he's absolutely wonderful. 
and he likes to make himself known every now and then on these videos. Not often, but... Angle the page a little bit. There we go. Lovely. Really pleased with these detailed lines. So just my word of advice at this stage is to sort of build up the colour slowly. You can always add, it's much harder to take away. Adding just a bit of a nose of cobalt blue there, just to the edge. just blending that up again. Right, this is looking really nice, really pleased with it so far. Um, we'll just give these a little bit of a breather and I'm going to add in a few leaves down by our stem. So I've got my green gold sap green mix. As always, a bit of fluff on the brush. Um, size four brush and I'm going to do some very simple sort of shoots they're almost more like than leaves. Very similar to the crocus leaves that we had the other day. In fact, this whole piece has a similar feel to the crocus. And I'm going to let those dry, but not before adding just a little bit of sap green at the base. Okay, we're nearly there. I'm going to swap my water over though, because I'm now going to be looking at that little yellow section. Now, um, another uh, viewer on my crocus video the other day said that it was a bit of a challenge um, to make sure that you remind, remembered to always clean your brush off really well because yellow and purple are not friends. They are complementary colors, which actually means they're kind of the best of friends in a weird way because they look amazing together. But if you get one muddied in with the other, it never looks great. So we have to be careful. So what I'm doing is I'm just adding a little bit more cadmium yellow to the yellow stroke that I put in right at the beginning just to lift it a little bit and then we are going to add just a few dots of fairly concentrate purple colour so let me get my mix back in gosh that crimson is a strong strong colour we need more blue So in the centre of these petals, you get your yellow sort of mark down the middle, but you also get some wonderful sort of spots in with where the colour sort of meets the white and the yellow. So with my small brush, I'm going to just remember that even these little marks will be defined as to the sort of curl and shape of your petals. So when I start at the top here, these ones will be sort of unfurling out from the front and then making their way downwards.
And then the last thing to do, I think, is get just a little bit more intense darkness going on here. So we're just going to let this dry fully and then we'll come back with the last bit of detail and shadow. We're dry and ready for the final stage. So I've mixed up some of my trusty shadow mix for plants, which is my Prussian blue and burnt sienna. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mix a little bit of my dark purpley mix and my shadow mix. And now I'm going to have a little play around with some of the shadowier parts. So I am just getting a little bit of that on the underside of the petal. And then here, just fancy a little bit coming up. Bit of fluff on the old brush again. Deary me. I'm just looking for the places where the light and dark sort of meet because there's an awful lot going on in this flower. And this can be really helpful as a sort of last, last piece to the puzzle. just define where everything is really and also don't worry shadow does dry lighter in watercolor if you feel like oh it's all going a bit dark See here, by using it, by following the stroke round, you really get that sort of roundness of the petal. And here. Lovely. Now we'll just work our way down the stem a little bit and just get a little bit in there. Now I've sort of moved on to using the, the regular shadow mix. There's absolutely no problem if there's still a bit of purple lurking in there. Now what I do want to do is pop in one more leaf that's sort of come across the front. And you can use the shadow to define the other ones.
we go. Uh, a somewhat more detailed study of an iris. Um, and I really hope that you enjoy having a go at just something a little bit more, a little bit more detailed, as I said. I'm just going to add in a little bit extra green to the tips of some of these. But I've got faith in you. You guys are absolutely nailing um, these tutorials and I just thought let's push ourselves a little bit further this year and it gives me great pleasure to paint these ones with you. So there we go. An iris reticulata for spring 2021. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because it enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment and let me know how you got on with that slightly more advanced flower painting. And if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. All right, until next time, bye.